Hi, welcome to Islam 101. My name is Adam Erickson. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about my first, myself first before we move on to studying Islam. I work at the Raven Foundation, and at the Raven Foundation, we seek to make religion reasonable, violence unthinkable, and peace a possibility. If you want to learn more about that, uh, go to the Raven Foundation website. Um, you can see information. So that informs a bit of who I am. Uh, the second important thing, most important, is that I am a Christian. I try to allow my Christian identity to inform everything that I do. I take it seriously. Um, so when I'm studying other religions, when I'm trying to learn about other religions, I don't deny my Christian identity. I'm not objective. Um, I don't think anybody is objective. What I try to do is look at another religion through the eyes of practitioners, of people who claim this religion as their own. And that's what I'm going to try to do here, but I'm not going to deny my, my Christian faith, my Christian identity. Um, again, I'm not objective. I don't think anybody is really objective. We're formed by um, our identities, and what I want to do is give a gracious yet critical understanding um, of Islam. Now, why should you listen to me? Well, I think that there is a lot of, um, to use a Christian term, bearing false witness against Islam. This comes out of um, kind of a fear about what Islam is and who Muslims are. And out of fear comes a bearing of false witness through a lack of understanding. And so what I want to do is help us to understand what Islam is, who Muslims are. Um, it's, it's a complicated issue because you can't just say, oh, this is it, this is what Islam is, this is who Muslims are. Um, that identity means a lot of different things to different Muslims. But what I want to do is take a look at the historical context, the historical social context out of which Islam was formed, out of which uh, where Muhammad came from, in which the Quran came into. This is, this is what I'm trying to do, and um, what does that mean for us? So the historical context and the theological context is what I want to do. So that's what's going to guide our um, sessions together. Uh, I hope that Muslims will uh, watch this and help guide us through this discussion. I hope that non-Muslims, Christians, Jews, um, Hindus, atheists, whomever, will also pay attention to this and um, we'll have a good discussion. So what I want to do is start this off, end this first session with kind of a meditation. Uh, Jews, Christians, and Muslims all claim roots in a person named Abraham. And you can read the story about Abraham and Isaac and Ishmael. Um, Abraham and Isaac, Genesis 16 through 22. Uh, Abraham and Ishmael in Surah, which means chapter of the Quran, Surah 37, verses 83 through 122. And I want to start off on this kind of uh, meditation about the story of Abraham. It's a very complicated story in the binding of Isaac or the binding of Ishmael. In Genesis, it's the binding of Isaac. In the Quran, it's the binding of Ishmael. Isaac and Ishmael are the sons of Abraham. Um, and God puts Abraham to a test in both of those stories. Abraham grew up in a polytheistic culture. His dad was uh, a practicing polytheist. His, everybody in his culture were polytheists. And Abraham begins to see a different vision of God. These polytheists were sacrificing human sacrifice, animal sacrifice, to their gods. This is violence that's going on. And Abraham has a different vision of who God is. And he, he disowns his past. He disowns the polytheism of his past. And he tries to move away from it. Well, God puts Abraham to the test. And this is a very complicated story. A lot of ink has been spilled throughout history, both in uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, about what this story means. But at its most fundamental level, I think, it means this. 
both of these in both of these sacred scriptures, the Abraham Isaac Abraham Ishmael story is trying to get us away from sacrifice. It's an anti sacrificial story, moving beyond sacrifice. Abraham, God tests Abraham, and Abraham follows along with God. God says, Sacrifice your son. And Abraham ends up taking Ishmael, if you're reading the Quran, up on an altar and is about to sacrifice Ishmael. And God says, don't do it. I'm not like that. This is not who I am. I'm not the gods that demand sacrifice. I'm the God who tries to get you to live your life in a way that is not based on sacrifice, that is not based on human sacrifice. So I want to start our class kind of on this meditation, thinking about how the story of Abraham that is so crucial to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam is trying to lead us away from violent sacrifice of human beings. What does that mean for us? The other important thing is that in the Genesis account and in the Quranic account, these are brothers. Ishmael and Isaac are brothers. God blesses both of them to be um, fruitful and multiply and to have to become big nations what does it mean to be brothers what does it mean to be a family well they've become dysfunctional we have become dysfunctional how do we get beyond this dysfunction in our family we're brothers we're sisters we're we're family how do we get beyond this dysfunction i think abraham is showing us a god who doesn't demand sacrifice who doesn't desire a sacrifice in both of these both of these holy scriptures how do we live into that amidst the dysfunction of our world of our families how do we live into that that's the challenge that abraham gives us that god gives abraham and to each of us so um those are my thoughts hope you can meditate on that i'll meditate on that and um yeah we'll discuss um next class, the historical, social context out of which um, Muhammad comes from and the Quran comes in too. So there you have it. Um, Yeah, let me know what you think. Peace.